بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today I have the honor of hosting Sister Farah Amin. Mashallah, tabarakallah. We'll talk more about, but this is the book that I'm so excited about. Sister Farah Amin recently launched her book. It says Smart Single Muslima, Transform Your Approach, Love and Marriage. Now, what is the book about? We'll do a free giveaway for this book. Inshallah, you'll, you'll, you'll love it. Smart Single Muslima is a thought-provoking Muslim marriage guide for Muslim women in this book, you will discover how to find a husband, how to find out if you are compatible, what questions to ask a potential spouse, how to deal with disappointment. Jazakallah khair, sister Farad, for this book. How oh, are you? Alaykum. How are you? I'm UK. <laughs> <laughs> Wa alaykum as um, Like I said, this, this is a fantastic, fantastic book, mashallah. Um, and I, I texted you, I sent my 12-year-old and my 10 year old who will be 11 and 13 soon in summer, they love the book, especially my 13, the one who's 13, she was like, mama, this book makes so much sense. So I want to tell the audience like, um, uh, Allahu Akbar, this, this is the need of, uh, of the hour, like really honestly. And it's not a preachy book. That's, that's the first thing that I want to say because, <laughs> because um, uh, you know, uh, you being a teacher, you've been teaching for how long now? Oh gosh, it's been 15 years now, I think. So, so you know the pulse of the student, right? You know, yes. the, you know, you know how to grasp attention. Alhamdulillah. So my first question to you is why this, how, and um, you know, what, what, what was your vision with this? Okay, well, uh, firstly, Tzadak um, have had me on. I, um, you know, I love your work, Imam, you know I do. And uh, it's, it's, I, was so, I was so stoked when you, you asked me to come on. Um, so yeah, the uh, one I'm really happy that you liked it, and uh, just like to let the audience know, loved it, loved it. Yeah, and it was you know I always get surprised when I, I don't know what it is. I was I do get genuinely surprised when people say they really like the book, um, and um, and that makes me alhamdulillah that shows there's something good in there, and and it, all the good is from Allah and from Islam. Not I, I just see myself as someone who it, it's interesting that I've been reading lots of books I think for many years I've been reading books about women and women's issues mm -hmm. um you know by non-muslim women and by muslim women and um you know I think over time you start noticing things and making observations about changes in society especially when you're concerned about women's issues mm -hmm. and um I think and, and it's interesting I've been I'm the type of person who when I read a book I write notes um I've now chucked away those notes and I turned it into the book, but, but basically I had many notes on different areas relating to women and it's like it was turned into a bit of a um, puzzle that I was putting pieces together because I was trying to figure out that why is it that as a Muslim woman, the young women in particular, but to be honest, it's kind of gone to all ages, why is it that we're finding it so hard to get married? I kept hearing this, I don't know if, even if you've noticed this as yes. well, that um, like as Muslims, we love talking about marriage, you know, that, that is our favourite topic. Um, but I, it's interesting that more women are saying they can't find a, a suitable guy, they can't, someone who's compatible, or that, oh, there aren't enough men, good men out there. And it's interesting that non-Muslim women are saying exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I genuinely didn't actually um, uh, set out to write a book, but I wanted to get to the bottom of, just for myself really, to understand why uh, does this problem exist? And then, um, and I think, why, and then I, I also then thought, well, what does Islam have to say about it? If, if there's a problem, Allah always gives us a solution. Mm -hmm. So then what is the solution here? Because um, Islam is relevant for, you know, from the past and for the present. So it's, yeah, it, it's quite a tricky one to say, I, I didn't, have a particular vision it, it, and, and this is ah this is the other thing I think through the podcast that I have smart muslimah again it just happened that I was speaking to a number of um single sisters mm -hmm. who then raised certain issues with me and um, it was when I was discussing feminism that that definitely then started to come up that how has feminism affected our thinking um and so I wanted to produce a book which would um you know make um uh, given a different point of view that there's a particular narrative that I think as Muslim women we're hearing and we've learnt um, and I'm not and I wanted to come at the angle what I don't like and, and you can tell me if you notice this as well is that when Muslim women can't get married the blame is put on the woman 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And I don't like that. I thought, mm, that's not, is that, Islam doesn't say that, that blame the woman. Mm-hmm. So may, let's think a bit, you know, more intelligently, a bit deeper that, okay, the, the society that we're living in, is that causing issue problems for us? Is that putting, you know, barriers in the way? You know, are there certain ideas that we have been taught that actually they don't align with our faith? Um, and so they are causing, is that we've adopted. So, okay, it's, I, I'd like, well, I, in the book, I focus on the ideas. I definitely don't blame men or women because yes. that's, I think that's a very lazy thing to do, yeah, yeah. To, to accuse men that they're not good enough um, and to say to women, you're just to, you know, put a whole load of labels, whether you're, you know, the, the, the easiest one is to say they are feminists, so therefore, and they want too much. Um, so I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to have an intelligent discussion to, so that the reader can then see, okay, what is it that, where am I going on wrong as an individual, but where, where is society leading me to the wrong path? Has, have I gone down the wrong path? And so I can change course, because I think everyone can change. Inshallah. Michelle, no, you you were so point out. And um, just just letting the readers know the the contents, like for example, is marriage going out of fashion? Is it? Because a, a lot of our young men and women are saying like marriage is archaic. And you you use that word and you talk about it. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then there's the different people who you know you were interviewing probably and whose perspective you've written. Uh, we want a religious girl, but not too religious. Do you know yourself? Do you, you have realistic expectations of marriage? Then there's one about the desire to be desirable. Like I said, that's my favorite one. All, mm. I mean, all, all of it was my favorite, but you know, the one that really hits home, uh, uh, be smart, stop waiting, start living. Mm. Now it's, it's exactly what we are told about self-care and self-love and understanding yourself. But, but from the perspective that you come from, uh, subhanAllah, it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And then there's this, and there are stories of people, people who did not have uh, children, people who started mm. dated marriage, people who got rejected so many times, people, people who, you know, uh, there's so much wisdom. Oh, of course, there's a mention of Bollywood. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. and, you know, so so uh, like, alhamdulillah, what I liked about this was, like I said, my 13 year old could understand it. So an mm-hmm. 18 year old would understand it. And me being yeah. 39 this year alhamdulillah i understand oh, and and i um i also said this as this is for the viewers i said uh, one of the topics that um you touch and it's a sensitive topic mm-hmm. and we we hear we romanticize it in our khutbas uh but we really don't follow it like marry the person for the right reasons a person who is earning halal income because now we are very materialistic for us the mahar should be certain amount and, you know, and I say this, we've made nikah so difficult mm-hmm. and so easy. And, and you talk about it. Yeah. You talk about racism as well. I want you to uh, a little bit explore for the viewers to understand the ones who haven't yet bought the book, inshallah. Why were these, why were these things important? Were, were these one of those main reasons why our children are, you know, our children are just, you know, just the younger generation, just so weary of the idea of marriage. Like our parents' expectation is this. Our expectation mm-hmm. is this: there is no middle path, and what is what what should be the main ingredients? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I think just taking, um, like I said, I wanted to tackle the ideas that where that are driving our actions, and the thing is that I think as Muslims, we have to when we're making mistakes, we um, we don't need to publicly display um, uh, our sins. I'm not saying that, but for for a reader when they're reading the book. Um, if, for example, let, let's take racism. If they know that one of the, like, let's say, okay, their parents have said to them, you can only marry. I'm, I'm going to speak from a Pakistani perspective because that's what I am. Um, Pakistanis generally will say, you marry a Pakistani, and then even within the Pakistanis, there are levels yeah. and grades uh, yeah. that will be allowed. You know, I, I but- couldn't marry outside of my caste system. That was yeah. my mom's first and foremost, and the most important thing. You will marry inside the cast yeah. so that's it so now then what i would then say is we then have to question why yeah is that from islam i think it's a, a reasonable question to ask our parents it's a reasonable question to ask ourselves if we're the ones who have adopted that idea mm-hmm. that where is where did the prophet sallallahu say that we should do that and and therefore and 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 
so if he, if Islam, if the Prophet ﷺ and the Quran and the Sunnah does not say that, why are we holding on to it so tightly? And therefore, and what I do see is that is a, a barrier put in the way of some for some women that want to get married. When you're told you can only marry within your nationality or your tribe or your race, that really limits who you can marry. So when people say I can't find someone suitable, I'm I want them to think actually is that not a reason why you can't? And if you took that away and take it away because Islam has, has forbidden it, you're like you will be able to get married. Yeah. So now that's I know it's hard to do that. It's, it, it's very challenging, um, but we have to start. Isn't that what Islam came to do? Racism is rotten. Nationalism is rotten. It, it divides us. It makes one person feel more superior to another, and then we mistreat them. You know, isn't that exactly what's happening in, Pal in, in Palestine and yeah. what Israel feels about the Palestinians? <laughs> it, it can lead to, to murder and, and genocide. But taking it just back to marriage now, so they're the kind of ideas I'm saying, question them, you know, think about it, question them. And if they're not from Islam, please reject them. And inshallah, you will increase the chances of getting married. Yeah. Um, my, my husband usually t says that he says that like you and I we we got married okay fine we understood where our parents were coming from but now you and I we live in the United States of America we don't live in you know Pakistan mm. and our, the, the probability of our children marrying outside of not just the tribe but yeah. even outside of the race is very high 90 percent probably mm -hmm. right and, mm -hmm. and we should be very mentally aware that what is the criteria that we want our children to pick and choose from. Mm. A strong scene of being, uh, of being on the right, you know, on, on the right track, understanding and actually um, living theme. And mm -hmm. because uh, at least I think you and I, we, we understand that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we understand that. However, still there, there is a vast majority that does not understand. And then, and the, the, and the irony is this, listen to this, subhanAllah. And this is what we've heard over and over and again. As a, as a motivational speaker, I get so many um, um, emails from young men and women saying exactly the same thing. They are like, marriages are tough because A, they're very expensive, the ridiculous traditions and marrying into the caste system. So, but you as a motivational speaker, you say follow Islam, but Islam says that parents are to be taken to the highest regard. So I cannot, and these are 30, 35 mm. year old people. They're yeah. not like, you yeah. know, 18, 19 year old teenagers. And mm -hmm. they're like, and they have their careers and they have, yes. and, they, and if they've seen the world, but when it comes to marriage specifically, they're so gung-ho, they're, they're so scared of not, uh, obeying their parents and disrespecting them and then mm. they're miserable because they're not married yet yeah so, and you have highlighted that like you know uh, mm. you said it as well like what is islam and so i think there's also and this is this is not in the west actually the children living in the u.s they don't have a problem they, they're like okay fine you're not understanding me i know what is islam i'm understanding islam i'm going to court <laughs> yeah yeah well, the, yeah, the, this is it. I think you've highlighted something really good that I think as 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 the person wanting to, as, if you're someone who you want to get married, and if your parents are, of course, Islam says respect parents, but there is, if it means you are never going to get married, and, and the thing is that what does that result in? That does result in misery. That could result in people committing zina. That results in people turning to pornography. Yeah. Let, let's be completely honest about this, yeah. that if parents are being, there's a time where you have to put a, you have to say, actually, no, I want, I'm going to get married. Yeah. And as long as you're not committing, you of course do it respectfully. But I, I, I know if, it, a pair, you know, we can push the boundaries in a respectful way. And I encourage everyone to do that because again, the number of women I know of who are unmarried because their parents have been completely unreasonable. Now, the thing is, I'll be honest, parents are, uh, that, that's why this book is not for parents it, it's yeah. for the women it's to really get women to be thinking and it's not even for men uh, although some, some men who read it really like it <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah because uh, it's very respectful of both men and women you have a chapter that says are men really trash yes. which is <laughs> so yeah and because and so I think we do need to be you know there's a reason why the prophet Salah said marriage is my sunnah yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing, and it will help you to be, gain tranquility. It'll help you'll have you know we we know all this. So, I think we have women in particular have need to know when they need can should push the boundaries more. I'm thinking, like for example, my husband he's not of the same race as me. I, I'm Pakistani. He's Gujarati, and he had to be uh, quite strong-willed and say no. I 
it, there's nothing wrong with her just because she's Pakistani. It's not. In the same way, I had to have discussion, very uncomfortable discussions with my parents. Right. Uh, but then also, what it is, you, you don't do it on your own. You get family involved. You need yeah. allies. You need to get people involved to help you. Because if your parents aren't going to listen to you, do what you can to get other. And that's what, and inshallah, when people do that, you, and then of course you do the work. Um, yeah. That's the first thing you do. But I think that this is it. In, in Islam, we're not, pa you know, we don't just sit passively. And if someone's saying something wrong to us, we don't just accept it. It's that's not an, that's not an Islamic idea in mentality, so we shouldn't do that either. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. And I, I was going to say another thing. Um, so women, two two generations. It's not a generation thing. It's like let's just say a decade. So for example, a, a young man and a young woman they fall in love. They're Muslims, but due to their due to their restrictive uh, ideologies through their parents, they don't get married. The, the girl go, goes into her 30s waiting, waiting, waiting. Now her probability of getting married has become very, very slim. Mm -hmm. Whereas the guy, he's 35 and he's getting an 18 year old to get married to because, okay, now he's finally given up to the, his mother's sobs and like she wants to see her grandchildren before she passes away. And so in, in my head, the woman, the, the, the girl who waited for that long and did not get married, she suffered and she will yes. continue to suffer. And that young girl who has no idea about life and is mm. 18, 19, 20, and, and women do this to other women. Uh, but, uh, the, the, and it's Naseeb, we understand. It's uh, because mm. you did talk about destiny. You did talk about Qadr. You did talk about what's written is, is going to happen and about disappointment as well, which is extremely important because one of the fears is, I don't want to get married because I might end up like my parents' marriage or mm -hmm. I'll be unhappy or I'll get divorced or I don't, I just don't think I'm marriage material because you also pointed out in this book that marriage has not now become focused on our own personal growth. It's not about raising a family anymore. At least mm -hmm. that's the concept, right? So th there's no question here. There's just basically letting the viewer know that this book is so practical and mm -hmm. it makes sense. But coming uh, coming back to coming back to this, you also have a course uh, yes. related with this book. And yes. you said that mashallah that that course is up on your website. Alhamdulillah, people can go and get it. And inshallah, like I'm saying, we're going to do a free giveaway of the book and the course. So inshallah, uh, you'll be hearing from us soon. What does the course? Uh, what's the purpose of the course? Like, isn't reading the book enough? I think. Um... You know, some people like books, some people like courses. I like I, there's different. I I bought. I think I was thinking of it in that way, and um, I think for yeah, some people just rather listen and watch videos and take notes. And um, I think there's more like the the book was. Um, you could say like the book is the foundation, right. and then I just add more in in the course. You get you get the book. It's like you get the information from the book, but then right. I've added more things because. I think, you know, as we know, marriage, I, I like what you said previously that it, nikah, and it, it, marriage in Islam is simple, but we as Muslims have compl made it complicated. And I think living in, um, Muslims living in the West in particular, it's um, the ideas that exist there. So whether that's, you know, individualism. So, you know, the whole idea of, you know, do what's good for you. This, you know the idea that you'd want to sacrifice your time and your energy on a husband and kids oh, yeah. you know sacrifice and compromise are taboo words oh right? yes yeah marriage if if marriage is attached to sacrifice and compromise oh my god there's something wrong with it yeah yeah and, and you, this is it and it, it's because we're told to always just think of number one and do what makes you know you feel good and live life on your own terms and you know that they're that they're, they're what we're hearing constantly. So this idea of uh, going into a union where you will have um, shared roles and responsibilities, and sometimes you will have responsibilities. That, and in Islam, it is clearly defined. Hey, these are the, this is what the husband needs to do. This is what the wife needs to do. These what the, this is what the kids need to do. You know, it, it's nice and clear for us. But those nice clear rules are seen as um, like they 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 the jail bars of a you know and you're in prison once you get married you know um, marriage was compared to a comfortable concentration camp by um, Betty Friedan if I if I'm yeah it's Betty Friedan uh, who wrote the second um, oh gosh I've forgotten the name of her book now um, it'll come to me but she she wrote that in the 1960s um, so 
um so you said oh gosh I forgot my train of thought but yeah it was these ideas what I'm saying is that again we should question them but um within the course then it's it's really a matter of if you want more in-depth information you know then please feel free to you know do it and that's what I tend to have people have bought the book and then They've also joined the course as well. It, it's pre-recorded. It's absolutely so you can... important. I think, I feel, if, if especially for the girls that I'm, I'm, I'm wanting them to read the book and to, to learn from the course because this will help change. Uh, this, is, this is that kind of book that helps understand better, that helps mm. change the mindset. It's ex yeah. extremely important. Um, what, what has happened has, what has happened, and I believe this, that... Um, unhappy marriages are not always unhappy mm -hmm. however sadly we've just so focused on the unhappy part that mm. we have visibly uh, taken away from the good parts of any of those marriages and our children are so focused on the unhappy you know mm -hmm. unfulfilled parts that they're not even considering like okay fine the unhappy part was just like 15 person what about the rest of it what about you know how we were growing up how 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 courageous our parents were in in, in their own terms uh, helping us get the best of both education and life etc etc so I, i'm i'm definitely i'm sure that the course will be more helpful as just to beside reading a book mm -hmm. and how, how many gen zers do you know who read books and they're like okay yeah i got the message <laughs> like, <okay. laughs> i mean they do they're they're smart people out there mashallah tabarakallah but definitely i would highly recommend that get do the book, get the book, and get the course as well. Mashallah, tabarakallah. I think it was Lisa Herring also. I'm, I'm forgetting the name that you mentioned. You've mentioned quite a few names as well, and their books, and and you know their ideologies, and where where certain things are coming from. Mm -hmm. and, and it's really good because the children or or the young people can make can make comparisons. Uh, you said some men also read the book, which I think is good read for them too. Yeah, I I think it's um. You know, I think what's what we don't realize because I I've, I was born and brought up in in the UK. You know, from from day one, um, there's certain we get certain messages that we just absorb and we we don't even realize. I think Alhamdulillah, I think we're getting more savvy to realize um, when things are really blatant. But for a young woman living in the UK or in the US, um, it, it's like you're it's like the you're told your life is you you study you you go to university you get a job you know marriage is something if you want to do it you can especially nowadays it's become so um you know it marriages in for non-muslim women there's a really interesting book called um all the single ladies i've forgotten um the name of the author but i've read quite a lot of that book and again it was um charting the 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 history of women's rights and women and the lifestyle that a woman in the 21st century now chooses and um and she was saying and she in all the facts it was it was factually very accurate that a woman has been in the best position as far as she doesn't need a man in her life because she has enough money she can get a job she her choices are she has a plethora of choices so she does not staying single it's like the best time of a woman's life why would you want to give that up and the thing is that now, of course, for non-Muslim women, having um, relationships out of marriage and fulfilling her desires it is, is possible through apps and Tinder and, and dating and, and hookups. So for a non-Muslim woman, that single lifestyle makes 100% make sense for them. Every, every desire is being, and then if they, don't, they can adopt kids, they can go and freeze their eggs. They, don't, they really don't need a man. Yeah. So for them, that lifestyle, I under, they've got it, they've chosen it. That, that's up to them but what's happening is we as muslim women we're being given that as an as not only an alternative as the the best alternative <laughs> the best alternative yes. yeah and the islamic alternative is oh my god you're gonna have is it's so backward you're gonna have a man who's gonna tell you what to do and you're gonna have tied down with children and you can't travel and you can't go out it's can you see so and the movies and the music and the netflix shows that everyone is constantly telling us this so it's not surprising that Muslim women are adopting it. And I, in a way, part of this book is just to make us think, hold on, let's just pause and stop and think, is that what we really want? And are, the, are our non-Muslim sisters, really? you know, it, are they really happy? Is this lifestyle, it's, it looks amazing, 
but are they how happy are they really you know mentally and physically because at the end of the day we are not made to be lonely creatures or yes. it's just it's not in our fit rather it'll keep religion on the side it's mm-hmm. just not a human's fitra to to you know do these every time the heart breaks i don't know how, i don't know how we have developed the skin to say that the heart doesn't break mm. the heart breaks i mean yeah these random readings <laughs> and all of it, it, it it's 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 um it's again, don't don't you find i i think what is um very concerning to me is how you now have a muslim dating scene you you have a whole industry that yeah. is also telling muslim women and men that you know what this is absolutely this is okay you can do this you know uh, websites like muslim girl is um will have you know articles promoting this you have you know and then you have okay netflix will create shows that will have muslim characters who again are have adopted this very liberal progressive lifestyle so and then you've got art you know music artists so now you've got a muslim face to this narrative and yeah. i think it's very easy to then think this is normal this is okay and we we really have to be more intelligent and more critical of of, the, of what we're consuming absolutely um about about the apps uh, i've seen both men and women suffer Mm. As a, and and uh, I would love to you know this that my sister also got married through through a marriage app, and I know other people who did get married through marriage apps. And if mm. if take if if done responsibly and with a good yeah. intention, it does work for you. But yes. I've seen also personally the boys and the young boys and the young girls that I know who have suffered because of it because there are so many options that it's a candy store and people yes. are and and especially the younger people are just playing. They're like swipe left, swipe right, and yeah. and. Uh, and the word rejection that you've used in the book with that the yeah. you know um the desire to be desirable like yeah. how many times am i going to be rejected first it was like putting a tray in front of people who are sitting in your living room mm. the, it's, it's the same thing just now it's behind the phone screens and so you're like and 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 she says it so nicely she says like random people who are like okay fine i'm so bored i'll just say hi to her or mm. hi to him like mm. Yeah, it's dehumanized us, hasn't it? it yeah. And it's 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 presented. Oh, it's fun. It's um, cool. It's so, you know, this is it's so modern. This is what we should be doing. And think, no, you've just commodified all of us as human beings and sexualized everyone, and and, and made everyone pretend. It's like they have to pretend to look a particular way, and and everyone's face tuned their their selfies anyway. So it's, it's quite and it's very fake. Yeah. And you think where. Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah didn't create us to be like that. We, why are we? So let's not take that. That's what I'm saying to sisters. Reject it. You don't need to put yourself through that. There are alternatives. It will be harder because they've made it so easy. But don't don't do this to yourself because when that sister sent me that, um, I interviewed that sister for the po- podcast episode, and I was just oh my god. When she's, I, I think that was one of the things that kind of. gave me a kick to say i uh, i need to write something <laughs> i need to do something here because you know as muslims when we see a problem a little a little you know if you see an evil and this this is an evil i see in for muslim men and women that's become so hard to get married and um it's 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 not it's it's an evil and so you you, cha- you know you hate it in your heart you speak up against it or you change it with your hand and i thought alhamdulillah i think i can do all three so i'm going to do it yeah <laughs> mashallah <laughs> tabarak allah mela subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your effort accept oh, all, all the good intention that you put in here alhamdulillah mashallah tabarakallah jazakallah khair to everybody who helped support you uh, oh, um, yeah. the podcast and you know the whole thing and the the book cover is beautiful as well mashallah i like it i really like it yeah mashallah it was a um, um a man the artist a sister who's a man the artist did it she's she's so creative alhamdulillah it's it's really it's i was holding it upside down sorry people <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is really good mashallah um get hold of the book it's on amazon and uh uh easily available yeah you can also if you don't have amazon i've now put it on um if you go to my website smartmuslima.com that's without a h <laughs> i um if if you go to click on you'll see the ebook and you can get it on google book google play books now so inshallah that's you, that that's another way to get it as well inshallah jazakallah khair sister for it inshallah this was an honor thank you so oh, much for your time alhamdulillah and um see you soon again and um the podcast i love the podcast i want the audience to know that actually i started 
following Sister Farah, and I'm a big fan of her podcast. And as well as, you know, she said that I read a lot of books she has. And that's what also went, uh, got me, you know, into learning uh, the whole feminism because our first conversations were regarding writing about it and all of that and the book that, yes. we, that will be coming out as well, Thinking uh, Muslim. Am I right? Thinking yeah, Muslim. you're right. It will, inshallah. We're, it, that's a long-term project. It, 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 and so we're, we're still working on it. That, that's still there, inshallah. Yeah, so, and, and, and that's how I, you know, got involved into understanding because I being a youth mentor I knew stuff but you know the crux of it where where you so you got me into so I consider you as my teacher as well so. oh alhamdulillah, thank, alhamdulillah. Uh, thank you so much inshallah and inshallah uh talk to you soon inshallah assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam